Hey kids, Uncle Matt here. Uh, about a year ago I did a video on this uh, PAP K3 handheld console. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. It barely plays games. Uh, it barely played ROMs. There's no information about it on the internet at all. So uh, I kind of shelved it and a year later, 2016, and I found another supplier. So I got a new one. Uh, this is the updated version of the PAP K3. It's got a lot of neat stuff, and I did manage to find out a little bit about the console, so we'll go into that as well. Uh, stick around, we're going to play some games, we're going to have some fun, and learn a little bit about this weird knockoff Chinese console. Thanks for watching. So here's the new system. Uh, came in the same box as the last one did pretty terrible box, especially when you're just putting it in a, a regular bubble envelope. System sits on top. Came with uh, TV cables, a pair of really terrible headphones. That's what the system was in. And a uh, power adapter for the UK, which I can't use here. Instruction booklet. A USB cable and mine did come with a disc uh, all that's on here is basically a copy of what's loaded onto that put all this junk back in here of course the manual has all kinds of fun English in it it doesn't really give you much Now I brought my other one out just to give you a comparison between the two. Uh, you can already tell that there are some differences. The new one doesn't have a removable battery. There's nothing here. You can't take that battery out of there. The uh, little nub here is kind of weird feeling. And it still feels incredibly cheap, so it's about the same build quality as this last one. Go ahead and turn them both on for you. They both have the same startup screen game prints. Now, oddly enough, the new one does what it's supposed to do. Um, basically, it plays games. It, it does everything that I wanted this one to do when I bought this one. The firmware is a little bit different on this one. I'm wondering if that is the reason that it does things a little bit better. I don't know if you can make that out. It's 430A 40BSM version 2.4. Uh, it's got a 4 gig card in there. And it was built on June 7th, 2013. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn that off. Game prints. So that's the new guy. Here's the old guy. Go to system function, device information. Now this one's firmware is 430A 40CSM version 1.41 built on September 21st, 2012. Now I don't know if the firmware is the issue with this one. Uh, some ROMs do work. NES ROMs work. Um, there's a few others that work. The remainder do not. And if you go into the system menu, go into games, classic game, and optional game. There's one here called App 3D. Now, if I remember correctly, no such file. Okay. And like you've got GBA on here and stuff. Um, for the most part, they do work, just not very well. Now, with the new one, I will show you here. I was surprised to find, and this actually sets off my entire uh, finding out everything I could about this console. So I'll show you here. Optional game. App 3D. See, it's got all the apps on here. 
let's just open seven days and I'll show you what comes up. Dingu Games. Now see, and that really struck me as odd. Because I always wondered why in the world a Dingu game, it works quite well actually. Show you here. I always wonder why in the world a Dingu game would work on this weird Chinese console. So I was doing a little research on this uh, PAPK3 unit, and uh, from the very little that I could tell, some Chinese company out there just basically tossed a handheld together, put a semi okay screen on it and hacked up some Dingyu A320 software, or firmware I should say, and slapped it on here, and the thing about this is you cannot access anything on the internal memory on this, at all. It, it's completely blocked off, if you put it into the computer, you can't add games, you can't touch the games that are already on there, you can't do anything. So I don't know what to do about that. I'll figure it out. Uh, maybe some Dingyu software out there somewhere. Somebody has an idea. But anyways, I thought to confirm the Dingyu theory, I would take it apart. Oh, look at that. It's held together by a shoulder button. And oh, the screen cable. Well, that's nice. And whatever this is. Oh, those are the, oh yeah, look at that. Cheapo buttons, those are the start, select, and sound buttons. A bunch of junk. So we'll just take that ribbon cable right out of there and have a look at what this thing is running. There we go. Oh, there's another cable. Oh man. Okay, I can deal with that. So, what kind of. Oh, look at that. It's running a JZ4755 Ingenic. Hmm, seems to me that's exactly the same processor that the Dingyu uh, A320 or A380, I don't remember which one, I think, yeah, I think that's the same. Oh, ah, duh, it's right here. Yeah, it's a little micro SD card. Just a little micro SD card, that's all that's on there. I'm going to plug that into my computer, have some fun with it, uh, see what I can extract or even gain access to on there, and I'll let you guys know if I find anything good. Okay, so I went ahead and opened up the new one. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, the memory cards are just right here. Slide right out. I said they slide right. There we go. Slide right out. Uh, what I'm going to do is put it in an SD card adapter, slap it in my computer, and make a backup. Um, essentially, okay, long story short, it's a proprietary firmware. It's a hacked up uh, Dingyu A380 firmware. Uh, what they've done is just made it their own. So what I'm going to do is take the one that works, make a backup image, uh, burn it to the SD card that came from that, which I've also made a backup image of, and see if that just works, because this one actually had some Dingyu games on it and, and stuff like that, so we're going to see if it works. So I already checked, it is running the new firmware, firmware that is on my brand new one. This is the old one, remember, with the removable battery. I'll go to the new firmware here. Life's information. PAPK3, 430A, 40BSM version 2.4, built in July, or sorry, June 7th, 2013. So, new firmware is on there. I'll go to all music here. Lady Gaga's uh, Timeless. Bad Romance, uh, Dreams, which is actually, sounds like the Cranberries, uh, and Half a Moon Climbs Up, which actually doesn't work. If you select it, it doesn't work. I will go ahead and select Bad Romance, and you can see the media player 
there it is, and it's actually Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. I don't know if that's copywritten or not, so we won't listen to it. Uh, it comes with a few videos. Nico Jump, something something, MP4. Sized, timeless classic, Gentleman. And Too Late, which is actually in 3D. Uh, that would require the 3D glasses that I did not get with the console. And of course it didn't play that, it played Size Gentleman. Anyways, video does look pretty good on this, I'll give them that. Uh, take a nice picture here. Oh, yeah, there you go. The camera's about as good as you'd think it would be. You can look at the pictures, they've actually loaded some pictures on here for you. Now, I don't know how well this is going to turn out on the camera here. I'll just leave it like that. Some of these pictures are, you know, your standard background pictures. Okay, that's pretty, that's nice. There's some, like, anime style things. There's some models and flowers and, and picturesque places. And then, the guy who made this in a cruddy little factory in downtown Shenzhen or wherever uh, was like, hey Barbara, turn around. I need to take a picture to test this. And Barbara's like, go away Patrick. Anyways. File manager. <laughs> Basically what you'd expect, it's just uh, a really basic file manager world clock, calendar, personalized. What can I personalize? Let's take a look, see. The desktop set. Theme one, two, three, or four. Oh, well. Resume background. Languages. Yeah, I don't think I want to mess with any of that. Energy saving. Good to save some power. Yep, pretty basic. Connected to the TV. Okay, so we're going to start with Classic Game, uh, MVS, that's your Neo Geo, CP2 and CP1, that's your Capcom Play System, um, GBA, Game Boy Advanced, the Super Famicom, which is Super Nintendo for you North Americaners, uh, Sega Mega Drive, so the Genesis, again, North Americaners. Uh, NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's funny that they called this one the Super Famicom, but this one is the NES, not the Famicom. Uh, Game Boy Color and Game Boy. Got tons of everything. I'm not going to go through every single one here, just that would eat up a lot of time. And you get kind of get the point. So go to a... There we go, Street Fighter Alpha 2. Why not? As you can see, works pretty well. Now to get out of a emulator, you press start and select at the same time, and quit the game. Okay, and I'll do a, let's see, Super Famicom, sure. We'll go to Super Mario, Col whoops, okay, we'll go to Wolverine. Works pretty well. Everything looks good on the screen. Anywho, and let's try Game Boy Color, see how that turns out. Uh, Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, why not? I 
found out that the 3D games are actually licensed Dingu games, so they're actually the games that came on a Dingu when you bought one. So I don't know where they got those, I don't know how they did that, but it, it's basically rip off Dingu firmware, that, it, that's all there is to it. So this is Ultimate Drift, it is a Dingu game, and I'll just show you a little bit of the gameplay. Oh, I only get the one car, I am terrible at this game just so you know, don't laugh at me. Wow, yeah, here's the thing about the Dingu games, you can't get out by pressing select and start. You have to hit that little reset button. Seven days is uh, seven days salvation. Another one, coalition soldier or something like that. Luba Luby, I don't know what that is. Ultimate drift and Zayun, I don't know what that is either. Seven days. I'll show you seven days. The 3D adventure game. It was nominated for blah blah blah. Activate the sound. So the 3D is actually really smooth. Everything works great. Um, bottom line, everybody, for this PAP K3 console. If it's got the new firmware, fantastic. It works great. Um, I'd suggest buying it. I mean, for all the other functions that it has, I guess you can use it as a music player. I guess you could use it as a video player or whatever, but mostly for the game, because it is console shaped, uh, go ahead. I mean, it, it's, it's a fairly cheap console, and for what it does, it's, it's pretty cool to have. Uh, totally recommend it. So if anybody wants to know anything else, just message me or leave a comment. Thanks. Uh, I have to say I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing Dingu. Uh, I've heard Dingo. I've heard Dingu. I've, I don't know what to call it. It's spelled Dingu. I'm going to call it a Dingu.